Hi everybody, my name's Alison and welcome to So Like Dotte. And today is a different sort of a vlog. So I'm hoping that you're tuning in because this is something that you want to have a look at. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for stopping by once again. And if you're new to my channel, I'd absolutely love it. If you like what you see, you give me a thumbs up and you subscribe at the end. So today is a little bit different. Um, in my last vlog, I mentioned that I picked up the new Sewing Bee book. And um, so this is May 2022 um, and this is the new book called The Great British Sewing Bee and um, The Modern Wardrobe and it's written by Juliette Bizeur who won the 2019 Sewing Bee. Um, so I picked this up in WH Smith in the UK. No, I didn't. That's a total lie. I picked it up in Sainsbury's. I looked for it in Smith's. I looked for it in Weatherspoons, and they didn't have it at Kendall. I just wanted a, a little look at the patterns and things, but it, when it comes, it comes sealed. Um, and it ranges online. I had a look and it ranged from about 18 to 22 pounds to buy online. But I had it in um, Sainsbury's for £15 and for me that was an absolute no-brainer because there are 28 projects in here, which I think that's just an amazing price point. Um, so, um, <laughs> if you're a regular on my channel, you'll recognise that I'm in a totally different place here. I'm not really sure what that dark bit is there. So I hope it's not too distracting for you. I will drop in some pictures and stuff that'll cover some of that up, I guess. Um, but what I wanted to do was spend a little bit more time with the book and um, just taking you through it um, project by project as much as I can. Um, it comes in two pieces. So you've got, and I've mentioned this before, you've got this um, box that has all of your patterns in. So you can trace them off if you want to from there. Or, which I think is a lovely way to keep and store them. It's great that it's not in the back of the book. Um, because with some of the ones they tucked in the back of the book and um, so they're in there or in the book it gives you the details of how to um, print them off either a or copy shop which is what I've done for the ones that I definitely knew I wanted to make and I've sent them off to Flamingo Prints to get printed up or you can um, print them off A4 and obviously print and stick them together so you've got all those different options available um, if you follow my channel, you'll know that I'm not great at tracing out. Um, so tracing out, what's that even a word? Tracing, <laughs> just making things up now. Um, so I do tend to like a O size and with um, Flamingo prints, you can either get the typical sort of weight of paper or you can type in the comments um, for um, tissue paper. It's not tissue paper, but it's it's somewhere between the weight of a typical Tilly and the Buttons pattern and the weight of the paper in a big four pattern. It's somewhere in between there. You can also choose black and white or colour. So if you've um, downloaded the pattern and you can see that the different size brackets are in different colours, you can select the colour option. Um, these ones I don't think are, so I didn't select that. I just clicked grayscale. So onto the book. Um, so I'm going to talk it through and what I'll probably do is take some pictures and drop them in as I go through. I don't want to give the game away completely. Um, so it does start off with a lovely introduction from Patrick and Esme. Just read Esme's book. If you've not read it, you need to get hold of it. Absolutely amazing. And a lovely introduction from Juliet as well. And then you go into um, quite a chunk of how to use the book. So I would say with this, if you are brand new to sewing or like me, you've returned to sewing after a long time and you think, oh, this might be beyond me. I do think there are projects in this book that are suitable for beginners and it does hold your hand step by step all the way through. I had a really good look through it last night and um, it talks about um, difficulty levels, choosing your size, pattern adjustments. Um, lengthening, shortening, grading between patterns. So, for example, if you're a different size at your bust, your waist, your hips, um, how to grade, is you, I don't know what that is, how to grade between <laughs> between <laughs> between those. Um, and you know, I would class myself as an advanced beginner, maybe moving towards intermediate now. But there was, I still think I would use this as a reference. I have got another sewing reference book at home. But I, I just I found the way that this is laid out just quite easy, quite um, easy to go to um, and quite easy instructions as well. Um, so how to do bust assessments, waist dart adjustments, full bust adjustment and um, adjusting patterns that don't have darts. Um, 
it's got about customising and adapting patterns. I can tend to go a bit off piste sometimes, get an idea in the head and I think, oh yeah, if I just, you know, chop that sleeve out of that pattern and pour it into that pattern and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but I guess that's part of the fun. Um, there's a bit about upcycling the look, inserting piping, um, add and patch pockets, pocket flaps, expose zips, um, adding um, pussycat bows to a mandarin collar, um, making a toil, um, how to transfer adjustments, working on a dressed form, which isn't something I've not got room for a, a dressed form, um, which is what you will see um, been working with on the sewing bee. I just don't have the space for that. Um, it talks about steps to buy in one of those fabric types. Um, more unusual fabric types, tools and techniques. There's just so much in here, even about choosing with the right needle for your fabric, interfacing, the right weight of fabric and colour, how to apply fit, um, interfacing, pinning and cutting. It just, I'm not going to keep going through. You can see it takes you through everything, reducing bulk, hemming, putting in sleeves, facings, it's a buttonholes, you know, I can just see you've got tips and troubleshooting and um, talks about sustainable sewing. Um, and although I've just kind of dropped a video and I've got another one to do about fabric haul, um, I'll drop a picture in of um, my daughter and Naira now because um, she's wearing a dress that either my mum made or they made in one of the factories that my mum made in. I think it's probably a 19... I don't know, maybe an 80s dress. I'm going to go with 80s, early 90s. Um, and she just literally pulled it out of bag at home just before we came away. And she had it on. And I'm, I, I said, can I take a picture of it? And and she and I have both, over the years, loved to buy, um, you know, re reused, recycled. I like to upcycle clothes. So if I'm not, you know, wet reaching for something or I've, I've worn it a lot, but I've, you know, I've gone off it a little bit. I like to sort of think, what can I do with it next? How could I change that up? So out of some gathered dresses um, that were made of jersey, I've turned those into t-shirts using the um, fabric that is already there. Um, so yeah, there's lots that you can do. Um, so more about the project. So I do say so a lot. I recognise this. So, um, the first one is paper bag waist trousers. Um, now, I'm not a fan of paper bag waist, only because you tend to need to tuck in your t-shirt to show off the paper bag waist. But, of course, you can just wear a top over the top of it. So, although it's shorts, the next project after it takes you through that, and it takes you through everything, step by step, really clear instructions, which is what I really like. Um, it talks about doing the turn-ups on them and then it turns them into some full-length trousers. And um, I didn't download the pattern for this because I've got quite a few sort of pull-on type trousers already that suit my shape and style. I've got the Friday Pattern Company um, Soero trousers to make up yet. Um, they're a slightly different version, but um, so that's why I didn't download this one. But if you're looking for a pair of simple, it's one of the things I always say to people, if you say, what would you suggest to start with? I always say, just start with a simple pair of trousers. Literally, you're going to do two seams on the legs, possibly only one seam, depending on the pattern, like the Anna Allen, P P I never say this, Pomomo, Pomo pants. They're just one seam on the legs. You put one inside the other, do the crotch, hem them and put the elastic in the waist. I've probably oversimplified that, but it would take you through this step by step. The next pattern is wrap over. So it's a wrap over dress. Um, and then that, um, now again, it, it, I've got some wrap over things. I'm not a major fan of wrap over. For, for me, I'm quite big busted and I, um, but I do, like the th some of the things that I've got. So I didn't download this pattern. There's not, nothing wrong with it at all. But what I do like is the skirt, how they've styled the skirt. Definitely more of a winter look, but I absolutely love this with the D rings here. Now, when I showed it to Anaira, she liked it, but she said, I don't like, you know, that wrap overs just open up. But I said there'd probably be a way that you could um, do something so, you could join it somewhere here so that if it did flap, it wouldn't fully open up, but you'd still be able to open it up and get in and out of it. But I just really like the look of that. 
So it talks you through how to convert that dress pattern into that skirt. And I think that's absolutely lovely. I think that would look great with some DMs and things in the winter. Um, and then turning it into a jumpsuit as well. And that has a zip up the back. Um, now I've already done that with the Tilly and the Button Sophia trousers. I've done that into the wrap jumpsuit. So again, I didn't download that one. I did download some though. This one was probably the reason that I bought the book. And I know that you could do this dress probably from Squares of Fabric and not buy the book. Um, but I just, I'm determined this year to master sharing. And when I say master it, I've had to go at it once um, and I, it, I couldn't get it to work. So I've got two machines that I can play around with. But I think there are also lots of techniques about how to just wind the sheer and elastic on and do it. Um, but I just love it. So this was my number one. Um, I love it in this gingham, but I love it in the floral and um, what day it's today? It's like the, I'm on holiday, so I'm lost off, but it's Thursday, possibly the 12th, I think, of May. And on last night's sewing bee, it was holiday and theme, and this was the pattern challenge, this dress. Um, and I also think I would probably do maybe a little ruffle on the bottom of it. So the bodice is shared. Um, on the sleeves here, there's a couple of rows of sharing and then there's elastic on the strap, elastic here and elastic here. So it's, it would keep it well in place. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I thoroughly love that. It's basically just um, some simple pieces and most of it is rectangles and then the sleeve and this is your bodice. So with it, it shows you, obviously it talks about doing the sharing. So you actually do the sharing on the rectangles of fabric, then fold it over and then you put the front bodice piece on and the back bodice piece on and cut that and then work from there, um, which is different to maybe how I've seen it done before, which is kind of a, a long rectangle that's shared and you've got to sort of measure your chest and um, obviously you cut those pieces to match the pattern sizes for your, your um, chest area. But um, how I've seen it done before is you just do sort of one big rectangle um, based on your size and then share the whole thing where I do like how that looks and how the sleeves fit into that. So I'm really hoping I can master share them so I can do that one. Um, and then the um, next version of that, which I do like the look of for holidays when I'm a little bit smaller, um, which will be our next one in September, the beach holiday, um, is this dress. So with this one, you can see it's got the sharing at the waist and just at the top of the bust. So I really like that and I'd probably make that a bit longer than that. But I really like that and obviously I don't really like the top of my arm showing, but on an evening I'd probably put a little denim jacket or a cardigan or something on with that. So that's the shared strappy dress. There's a fly buzzing around in here. It's driving us mad. I've had fly spray, we've got swatters got the whole thing and um, so if it makes an appearance quite friendly it sat on the top of the stairs and waited for me to come upstairs the other morning like it was waiting to say hello and um, yeah it'll miss us when we've gone so this is the shared top you can see there so obviously this is done in a sheer fabric but I do think I've got dresses in this effect and um, that I bought years ago so I do think that I would use this but I wouldn't do it in a sheer fabric um, so you can see it's got the sharing on the waist, on the collar and on the cuffs. But I do think this would be easily extended from a top into a dress. Um, and that would be something that I would definitely wear. And what, probably how I would use it is the dress that I've got has elastic here. So you can wear it on and off your shoulders, but it's got the sharing around the waist and the cuffs. So you can modify that into different things because there is actually a boat neck although it's a jersey top in here, it would give you that, you know, how to sort of cut that. So this is where you can take different patterns and start to put them together as you get more confident or even just having a go. You know, I, t I tend to not spend a lot on fabrics and um, I tend to look for things that are maybe $5.99 um, even lower than that. $7.99 would be more expensive for me. I think the most it, the most that I've ever paid might have been for this one, which was from Dalston Mills um, a couple of years ago. Um, well, actually, that's a total lie because I've got some Liberty Fabrics at home and they're probably the most expensive. So I've not downloaded this one. This is about sheer and semi-sheer fabrics. Um, so this is a dress um, 
just because it wouldn't be my style. And what I have learned is although it's a 1960s dance dress, although things look lovely, if they don't suit you, you've got to, you know, do things that suit your sky style. So that's then converted into a skirt. Um, and although they were sheer fabric, you could do other things and a rah-rah skirt, which I guess you could lengthen and do other things with as well. Um, so I'm sure there'll be somebody's cup of tea, they're just not mine. And then I have downloaded this pattern. I think this will be a pattern challenge in the current series, I'm guessing at some point, which is a um, Oxford bags for trousers. So these do have a zip and pockets and obviously a waistband and turn ups. Absolutely adore them in this fabric. I absolutely, I, I need to look like this lady there. Like I can do my hair like that when I do my hair curled. I just need to lose a bit of weight so I look like that. Um, so yeah, you've got your pattern pieces there. So this is the ones that I'm, one of the ones I'm waiting for. I mean, I wouldn't make this yet. I would make it when I was a little bit small. Oh, I keep saying that, you know, and I should just make things. Um, I do love it. And the top that it's with, I think, is the um, shell top that's at the back of the book as well, which I have got the pattern for. So it takes you through everything, how to put the zip in, how to do the fly, everything. So they're things that I've not done before. I've not done a fly zip before. And then you've got a pleated dress. Um, there so the pleats are in the skirt i like this bodice so this has got princess lines on it now i've done the deer and door magnolia dress which has got princess seams on um but i would prefer it if it wasn't a wrap over dress so uh, this one's kind of got a facing on and then you flip it over to make like a little collar and um, there's a picture of it as a blouse i think later which i can show you but i did think well i wonder if i could combine that to sort of with the magnolia skirt to make a different style of top um i think you can see it better in that picture there so quite like that i think that would be really nice and um, so i might have a go at that so this is how your mind starts to, or my mind starts to work like could i put this with that or could i modify that to go with that and um, and it's just simple things like that is the facing but then if you literally just turn it the other way and press it, then it becomes a little collar, which is just such a great idea. You've got the little wooden wool mini skirt. Now I'd never wear a mini skirt, but I could lengthen that and wear that. And um, my daughter's got some cotton ones like that that I made her last year um, from a simplicity one hour pattern that somebody gave me. And um, she said she liked that. You can do it with or without the pockets on as well. Um, and obviously the idea was it, um, this was the first pattern challenge this year for inserting or making your own piping. And then you've got a four pleated dress. Um, again, I've not downloaded this one. This wouldn't be my cup of tea. It just wouldn't suit my shirt. It's absolutely lovely. Um, so this is like a four pleat on the shoulder that comes down to about here. And I guess you could lengthen that. Um, it's just that um, sort of a shift dress doesn't suit me. I need something that brings me in at the waist. And that's in that one you do the invisible zip and then you've got that as a top that Juliet's modeling there in the picture which is lovely so this I think there's something for everybody in this in this book and I had just ordered which is a free download the Tasuti boat neck top I'd literally just downloaded it while I was here this week and then um so it's not printed off yet and um, this boat neck top was in here so I'm gonna I'll probably just make this one rather than print that off I, I don't know why you can't just hold the picture up I've got to peek around it at the same time um, and it's got it's a typical Breton top with three buttons on there and um, so it takes you through that step by step um, and I should have said these all range from a size, UK size 8 which um, is a bust of 30 up to a UK size 22 which is a 44 and um, now I I'm going to be honest and say in this pattern I would at the moment I would need to cut either a 20 or a 22 and that would have really upset me if I'd had to go into a shop to buy that size but in other patterns I can be a size 14 or a 16 and so by the, in the last two years my weight does fluctuate and I'm not the only person that does that it's kind of helped me get over that this is my size because actually I'm not bothered what I cut as long as it fits me what I do love about making my own clothes is I get to make them in fabrics that I like because for such a long time I've had to go into shops and just buy things because it fit in that colourway and it, you know, 
aware now I, I sort of think I look at fabric sometimes I pick up a pattern and think I need to buy a fabric for that pattern but often I do so from my stash and um, like a lot of people do because I've just got so much colour and fabric pattern choice now that I absolutely love it so don't get too hung up on what the numbers are just um, look at the um, the pattern size, your measurements, and also the finished garment measurements. So for these ones I've just given you, these are the finished garment measurements. Um, so yeah, and sometimes you can look at that and think that be, you can see by the shape of the pattern that there would be some ease in the pattern. So some looseness in the pattern and other things that wouldn't. So for example, this is a Tilly in the Buttons um, 6 which I can't remember which size it is, but it's not a UK six, obviously. I think this would be about a 14 to 16, but in here I would probably be cutting a size 20 maybe. So don't get don't get hung up on it. it you know, it's a number. That's what I always say. Um, you've also got a crop top and trousers. Now this top reminds me of um, the Suero top that's just come out the Friday Pattern Company one because I've, I've made that in a couple of toils, it's a, wrap at, a full wrap at the front and then a plain back. And just while I was here, I did say to my daughter and I, I wonder what it would be like if you just cut two of the backs on that. I'd need to check out what the neckline would be like, um, but I could alter the neckline. Um, but just because the wrap bit just isn't really me, but I would lengthen the top a little. Um, so obviously on this one, it's a crop top as well. But it just reminds me of the back of the Suero top. And it's paired with um, just some pull-on trousers, which are actually the pyjama pattern in here. But a lot often they're very similar anyway. Um, so it's a crop top and trousers. Um, and then there's a jacket. Now, I've not really made an awful lot of jackets, but I wouldn't make this in patchwork. I don't. And when I say these things, it's not nothing against anybody who would like this. It's just not my style. But um, so it's a patchwork jacket, jacket. So I think this is next week's challenge from what I saw at the end of Sunday last night. Um, so obviously, so you make the patchwork and then you cut the jacket out of it. But I would make the jacket, um, I think. And obviously it's got the trim on it. It's quite a simple jacket. And yeah, I think you could make that in different weights of fabric. And I think that would be nice. So, but this is about using scraps of fabric. Um, so the, um, I put it just so you don't have to make it as a quilted one. Um, and it's lined, as Juliet, in it just there. But I think that might be a nice make and I've, I've downloaded and, and sent off that one. So it talks about attaching the binding. I already make tote bags for my um, Forever Daisy chain business um, and print onto them. But this one is making a patchwork tote. But it has got some um, sort of pockets here that have a little fold out. I think you can sort of see on the side here. It's got some little folds. I like the look of that. Um, so I might sort of use that technique. Um, and then there's a pattern for a bum bag as well. Made out of patchwork. And um, and some pyjamas. Now that fabric is absolutely gorgeous. It's got people in dungarees and I don't know how well that'll come out on here. That's that fly again. Um, so it's a, a traditional pyjamas, which is like a shirt style. Now, I wouldn't normally i wouldn't wear that sort of pajama top i tend to just wear like a vest top with some stretchy pajama bottoms but i was sent to carlisle where we i don't tend to make shirts for myself but i do like i saw somebody the other day with some pull-on sort of elastic waisted trousers on with a vest top with the shirt laid over the top with just loose and i really like that because i think it takes you away from the cardigan style so maybe i might use this pattern and I would probably lengthen the sleeves because they're short sleeves. But I might use this pattern. See if I can find the, the the lines. I might use this pattern to just make a shirt instead. And obviously you've got your pyjama buttons there. Now you might be thinking this is all about the ladies. But it does go into the men's. So the finished garment measurements for the pyjamas. Size 8 is a 38 and a half inch. And it goes up to a 52 and a half inch um, bust. And these are the finished garment measurements rather than your measurements. And for the trousers, the waist is 36 and a half for the eight, up to a 50 and a quarter waist. Um, and it does recommend satin silk or cotton poplin um, for those. Um, 
it says intermediate level, but that I guess that's more for the um, the top. The trousers would be um, a very easy make, and it shows you how to do those. Um, so you could actually just make those as trousers if you didn't want to make the paper bag trousers. There's just so much in here. There's an eye mask. You know, if you're looking for little projects, these are great to make for little Christmas gifts and things as well. Um, and then there's the pyjamas, but there's men's pyjamas. So the technique's exactly the same, but you've got men's pyjamas there. I made pyjamas for Carl last Christmas. Um, I'll drop a picture in here. Um, they're just a simple bottom. He would just wear a t-shirt or... Um, bare chested with those but they're um he loves them because they're llama pajamas we fed the alpaca while we were here and um, and then the shell top which was with those oxford bags earlier and then what i love was i have downloaded this one the shell top turns into um it's just quite a classic top it's just got a little open with a button at the top i think they made this a cup maybe even last year on the sewing bee um, but it, it then in, turns into a sleeveless top with that reverse collar that I showed earlier um, with the interfacing. And then, um, so it's all different versions, just gives you different ideas. And then it turns into a long sleeve top. Um, so I'm going to flick back a couple of pictures because it's quite hard to see on this pattern. But with this one, I don't know if you can see it. So on the on the first shell top, it's just plain. But on this one, you actually have a row of stitching here and here. So you cut it differently. Um, see if I can find a, a picture of how to, to cut. I don't think I can. So you've got a piece, which is the V, the V in the middle of the top, and it shows you where the notches and things are. Or chalk marks I tend to use rather than notches um, and so on here this is the front but obviously um, this is the in the underside of the fabric this is how the front's constructed so it just gets that detail there which depending on what fabric you use how much that detail would show so it's it's made into this long sleeve blouse but I just wanted to show you that detail because I don't think you can see it as easily in this picture. But that has got that V of that there, the reverse collar and then the long sleeves. Now, I think I would wear this. So um, I'm going to give that a, a go at some point. I don't know when. Um, and that's it. And then you've got an index and acknowledgements at the back. So um, and it's filled the back of the book and um, the pattern pack is filled with pictures of the and the contestants but also the garments as well and um, yeah so i think for 15 pound that's a really good um buy there's 28 projects in it and um, and everybody will take and choose different projects that they want to work with and it may be that you know i'm 55 this year there are things that i would wear in it now but there are things in there that i would have cut and worn you know 20 30 years ago so i think you know wherever you're at in your life um, wherever you're at in your shape or your size or the colours or fabrics and I think it's interesting that if you look at that shell top how that's made in the plain brown and then the sleeveless one is in a blue it almost looks like a chambray denim colour and then in that pattern top how just that one top in sli with slight different changes but with different fabrics can actually look totally different and I think that's what for me is really exciting about sewing so I hope that you've enjoyed that little tour of the book um, and I did say I was going to drop in pictures but actually I think I've shown you quite as much as I would have with that um, and I think for £15 it's a really good buy and you don't have to print them out you can trace them so you don't have to spend any more money after that you could just sew from your stash and you'd be off and running so i hope and um, that if you do buy the book you enjoy it and um, yeah just drop some comments down below if you've already made anything from it or if you're looking forward to and that would be lovely so bye for now